Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is our channel where we show you how life is in Lucca. And in the Tuscan hills. I love cooking traditional food. And we love exploring our beautiful part of the world. So please, subscribe and welcome to Piazza Talk Luca. Ciao a tutti. Ciao a tutti. Well, um, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. This week uh, got us thinking because, uh, first of all, it's been our 30th wedding anniversary. And secondly, at a party, uh, a lady, a Lucchese lady, asked me how it was to be married to somebody who spoke a different language. And so these two incidents got us reflecting on the differences that both of us have faced when living in each other's country, because we've lived both uh, together in okay. London yeah. and in Italy, here uh, in Lucca, uh, but also um, answers from Naples, so also in a city, so um, which does make a little bit of difference in certain things. Mm, yes. <laughs> so uh, we thought we'd do how many differences? Well, we said five, maybe there's a six one if it comes to five. <laughs> Let's say we set for five more or less. <laughs> okay, so far away. Okay, um, shall I start or do I start? Yeah, you start. Okay, w one thing I noticed after some time in, uh, in England is that uh, everything was in a hurry. So, I said, are they really in a hurry, or they pretend to be in, in a hurry? Because uh, I remember uh, I asked somebody, how are you? And he said, oh yes, I'm very busy. So I, I meant that me feel well or bad or whatever, busy, what interesting answer there. So everybody looks very uh, busy, especially in uh, London, what do you think? Oh, I think it, it's true. I mean, uh, even my mother, when she was in her 90s, um, uh, she still says she's very busy. Uh, so, yes, I, I think that's very true. And Italians uh, always have time and actually work as hard. Uh, I think it's a great misconception that I've realised living here <laughs> <laughs> that Italians uh, don't work. But there are certain minutes in the day in Italy that are sacred, like meal times. Oh, coffee you time. have to sit down and you have to eat your meal properly. It's not something like in England, you know, lots of people come in from work and the, uh, whoever's first picks up something then goes and watches the television in their room or on the computer and eats there. Mm -hmm. Here, everybody sits at a table and eats. It's a sacred time of day. And talk. And talk. I, I kind of feel like it um, it keeps uh, Italian society together. Uh, and it's how um, the Italian family functions around the table. Yes. And uh, our video of a few weeks ago uh, says that, you know, ragù, Eduardo di Filippo, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It all happens, good, bad, around the table. With a ragù. <laughs> in that case. <laughs> um, so, always time is made for eating. It's sacred. Uh, and I, I noticed that particularly when our daughter was small and uh, even at, uh, you know, these six-year-olds, the evening plays and so on would start after dinner. Uh, <laughs> yes. these very tired children because supper was absolutely sacred. And also I was asked to pick her up once from nursery school at half past 12. So I went there at half past 12 and she was the only child there and I thought I'd misunderstood. But no, it's because in Bani di Luca, they eat at half past 12. So all the parents had picked them up before, so that the meal could be on the table at half past twelve. Anyway, you um, anticipated 
uh, two points <laughs> for my... <laughs> well, they're all interconnected. We'll get back to it yeah, later. It's about food and about children, the difference, and I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think the, that it is. So, uh, I think Italians work as hard, but there's a different structure around work. Yes, definitely. So, the next thing is, and I noticed about uh, food, uh, it was, and it is even more now, uh, quite expensive to get uh, uh, affordable, I mean, good uh, ingredients in the UK. I mean, they're more expensive than here. I mean, uh, good quality ingredients. Yeah. And uh, of course, if you shop, you go around and find things. But uh, on average, I found that it was uh, more expensive to buy quality ingredients in, uh, in the UK. What do you think? Absolutely. And I think you'll find, I mean, certainly in cities like Milan and Rome, there are ready meals, but nothing like in the quantity that there is in the UK. Um, people still prepare food. So yeah. there are a lot of just ingredients. Yes. So you can um, buy even in the supermarket. I've got uh, at least here, look, uh, not a big section about the ready made uh, meals, they still you buy ingredients and then you cook. And another myth is also, oh, in Italy people they spend a lot of time cooking. We cook, of course, all the time, but uh, we work, we do things, and uh, you find a way to do things quickly between things and so on. We also bake bread. And uh, people say, oh, you have the time to bake bread. Well, I found the time to, between things, to prepare the dough and then I bake the bread. I might bake the bread before going to bed and uh, had fresh bread for the for the morning. So it's just the way you organize your day. So uh, food in Italy is sacred. And if you're in a crowd, an Italian crowd, they don't talk about the weather, they don't talk about health, they're all talking about food. <laughs> uh, I mean, food is the center of conversation. It's the center of life. And it's, it's of great importance. Um, I think that's a pretty healthy attitude. <laughs> it's something that I... Uh, of course, what you do miss, uh, particularly living in the provinces, is ethnic food. Yes. And in, in England, we can have such an amazing... Um, Variety of cuisine. Yes. Uh, even, even if you don't live in the middle of London. Uh, and so uh, food here is... You know, we have friends uh, in Lucca who really will not eat Neapolitan food. It's foreign food. Yes. It's very regional. And obviously the younger generation are much more open because they travel much more. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, that hasn't hit the restaurant yes. <laughs> market yet. Um, so um, there really isn't that selection. The next uh, difference I found is about the transport. Transport in UK is uh, very expensive, and uh, apart from the cities, there between places it's pretty uh, bad. I mean, a few buses, few things, but nothing compared to what we get uh, local here. I mean, you can go to to Pisa, to everywhere. Got to buses every half an hour or whatever. There, so I can move around easily at a very affordable price. But they do stop quite early. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, also, I think uh, there is quite a good network of bus systems in rural areas. Yeah. Um, but they do tend to be only at times when there's school or work. I would say that in a very, very rural community like uh, Banyuluka, you have less buses compared to the to the past, and that had to coincide with the school time and working time, so much less than there used to be. But nevertheless, between uh, small uh, places like uh, Luca or Pisa, or even uh, the major towns in the area, you have a network of trains and buses uh, at a very affordable price, and uh, you don't need to use the car if you get organized. And they're pretty reliable, they're strangely reliable. enough. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, but uh, you you do have to be careful because now uh, when we arrived here 20 years ago, you know, trains always met buses at stations uh, and that's not always the case now. So if you're going to a little village, 
or, or if you're going to even small towns, often the train station is a long way mm. from, from the town, so you need to check that out. Yes. The other thing that actually was the first thing I noticed, to be honest, when I came to England, is the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made a cup of coffee here, which is, uh, well, what do you think, Italian? Or, or my coffee, actually. <laughs> I think uh, coffee is another of those sacred mm. moments in Italy. You drink it and you go, but nevertheless, you drink it. Yes. You, you, it's the moment when you say two words to the bar. You might meet somebody if you always go to the local bar. Or at home, you sit down, you have your cup of coffee. Yeah, so... Anyway, but I would say that, uh, say that in England uh, I found uh, not great coffee when I arrived the first time. But over the years, over many years, uh, uh, I can say that I had uh, two or three friends making delicious coffee. Yeah. English it's, style. It's still hard. <laughs> and I, I never quite understand why in London they all have gadget machines and the coffee is awful. Yeah, I don't mean... Uh, <laughs> just the espresso, or what I call in English espresso, but also I mean uh, normal coffee. I mean uh, English style coffee. I every so and so I get a good cup, but it took me many years until I <laughs> met the right people. I would say. <laughs> now the other thing that I have uh, uh, noticed in UK is about the children. Uh, it is interesting that uh, we started shooting this video yesterday outside and uh, it started raining when we were filming outside, so they had to run back to the flat. So we got to do it uh, uh, again tomorrow, but it seems to me that uh, the weather is a bit unstable, so we decided to film in the flat. It's uh, uh, thunderstorms. <laughs> thunderstorms, yes, and uh, I just said it is... Uh, 11 in the morning now, it's a bit dark. <laughs> <laughs> unusual, very unusual. <laughs> and so, uh, what I would say is about the children. What I noticed that the children in the UK, they send to bed very early at night, in my view. So we used to go to bed a bit, bit late, but especially if my parents were meeting friends at restaurants, we would go with them, even when we were very young, and uh, sit around the table at the restaurant, uh, even if it was a 10 at night, without uh, um, I think that's another thing, mm. that uh, in, in um, London, certainly, uh, people don't take their children to restaurants at night. Um, here, you, you just don't leave your children at home. You, no. Your children are always with you, and they sit in restaurants. <laughs> day, night, um, and and children do just sit at tables, Italian children. Yes, and also they learn how to interact with adults. Yeah, in, children in, in are a not, social environment. Uh, are not treated so much as children, but as human beings who are part of the um, the family uh, and part of the the whole interaction. And uh, I mean, life changes obviously all the time but um, for example w when our daughter was, was young you know there weren't all these uh, changing facilities and so on for children and restaurants would just uh, owners would take you to their bedroom for you to change your child or feed your child or whatever it was much more child friendly in a very relaxed way yeah. And, and people are very into interacting with children that perhaps people might be scared to do, even in the UK. Uh, yes, so we actually we came from England uh, after many years and we were house hunting. We realised immediately that uh, people were talking to our daughter in a way that nobody would do in the UK. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and she was three. And <laughs> they give her food, you know, without asking us um, <laughs> and the, that came as a bit of shock to me that you know people would just give sweets to uh, <laughs> to your child um, I, I think maybe there's a little more uh, reservation now but it, but in general you know people always talk to children um, 
and, and interact. Yes. There are these myths, like Italians are always late. Well, it's true that um, time is a bit more elastic, particularly for informal or social events. But if Italians have to go to a medical appointment or go to a train or whatever, they're always on time. Well, not only on time, they've got an hour <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I would uh, say more relaxed when you see friends, that uh, people that feel more relaxed at appointments with friends. Whereas in England, you know, you have the, the correct time of being late. or <laughs> <laughs> And if you're meeting a friend uh, uh, in town, you're always on time. Uh, the other one is uh, drinking. Now, uh, there isn't such a, a drinking culture over here as in uh, the UK. Even if I would say that uh, there is a culture with similarity with the UK in certain parts of Italy, where they tend to drink more and outside meals. Yes, but I, I think that, you know, people go for an aperitivo after work, yeah. often. Um, and now uh, there's also a pericena that has decreased a bit since um, COVID. COVID. Uh, but also, you know, when I arrived, I was very surprised to go to uh, a gallery opening an art exhibition and there was no alcohol. I mean, in England, you know, I've never not <laughs> walked around with a glass of wine. So that was a bit of a shock. And also a bit of a shock to find Coca-Cola on the table with wine. Uh, mm. Uh, so, and, and people do tend to drink uh, with a meal, uh, but mm. they'll have one glass of wine, yeah. not, you know, a bottle a night. People drink less and tend to drink more with food rather than... Yeah, separately. I mean, separately. Uh, yeah. Though, again, um, uh, that's slightly changing in younger generations. The other slight myth is that Italians don't queue. I mean, there seems to be... a uh, around here, people do queue, and people queue uh, um, in the doctors, for example. You know, you always ask who's before you, and it's very probable. In cities, probably less on buses, but in London, they seem to be pushy. Queuing probably is getting better and better, but uh, as a child, the queuing was not probably the most important social habit, I would say. <laughs> but it seems to me there's less queuing at British bus stops as well these days. Oh, no, we don't know it very often now, so we don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and in the supermarket, there'd be very rude looks if somebody queued up. <laughs> yes. And now, the school. I had an experience a long time ago as a teacher in the UK. Six form college? Six form college, yes. And it was interesting to see that uh, the way the English students they learn something and also the way that uh, uh, the school teaches things to the, to the students. The school inter is much more academic, but not always in the right way because we actually are forced to learn. And it can be quite a tragedy for some people because the school is, unfortunately, I would say, uh, is uh, selective. That wouldn't work for many people. So that is, uh, in my view, is not uh, not good. Um, and UK was more uh, um, relaxed. The atmosphere, in some ways, was uh, also. Um, I think it was a bit healthier for the kids. I think uh, I've taught in. Um... Uh, a liceo, which is a senior school, and also in a um, elementary school here. And I think that the difference is that there's much more imagination in English uh, schools. Uh, here, it's a much stricter, much more academic. Uh, and in the very academic school where I was, the children were under tremendous stress. Um, but they have all done amazingly well. Also, I mean, uh, in the village school, uh, in the first year, all those children, they go to school, uh, well, it was later, now you can actually go earlier. 
uh, but they could all read. Every child could read by Christmas. Yes. So from mm-hmm. September to Christmas, every child in that class could read. Um, it, it's a much more academic. There's no sport. It it has its pros and and cons really mm. uh, at the end. But I also know a lot of children who have dropped out of school who really shouldn't have dropped out of school. Yes, and I do remember in school that I did. Uh, it was terrible. The first class in five years is the high school in Italy. The first class we were thirty six. It's a large class, and in the end, of these thirty six people, only five managed to get to the final uh, exams. Diploma, exams anyway uh, diploma actually we were six and one failed so five got the uh, the diploma uh, the high school there so we lost 31 people on the way okay some of them they caught up later because you have to repeat the year anyway but it was still in my view a very bad record for the school <laughs> Yeah, and it's almost as though uh, children uh, can never be good enough uh, and aren't encouraged. I also think that there's much less help for children who have problems. Um, uh, and uh, so there are some very, very good things. And I went to a very progressive school uh, in my elementary school. And I can see the benefits of a more traditional education. Um, And I had a more (laughs) expensive education than Enzo, but I would say Enzo had a better education than me. So I I think that it's a very, uh, there are pros and cons, and it really depends on your child. Yes. Now, I think I said all my things, so you should answer to my points. Now, what are your points? Well, I think dress as well yeah. is one of them. Dress, I think, is... Um, in Italy, uh, the dress code has relaxed a lot in the time I've been here. Mm. Uh, but uh, when I came here, it was pretty formal. And um, even now, uh, I would never go out in the city um, dressed in sports gear. Uh, you, if you, if you want to dress like an Italian, uh, you don't have to be formal, but you do have to be put together. And, uh, for example, women of a certain age would never wear short shorts in the city. In London, nobody cares. So we see somebody walking along the high street with the flip-flop, hair just working out out of the bed, and then you realise that uh, (laughs) there are no more people, just uh, went out of the shop down the road, uh, almost wearing their (laughs) pyjamas. Yes, nobody cares. Nobody Uh, cares. um, Here as well, I think that it's quite interesting, because in many ways, dress is less formal, um, Mm. but it's always somehow put together. Then, uh, of course, the, uh, women actually usually wear pretty sensible shoes in the day because most Italian cities have cobbles and mm. we walk a lot in Italy. So you want to be comfortable. Mm. Um, and uh, you don't go around half nude. One interesting point that you raised now is about walking. Uh, we Italians, we walk a lot. Uh, and I think this is also a lot to do with geography. When we first came to Luca, people dressed very, very formally. But now life's become much more informal. Yes. So what is also your next point? Um, bureaucracy. <laughs> Patience. I think um, Italians are more patient, strangely, when it comes to bureaucracy. Mm. And... Um, uh, As time goes on, I've realised that British bureaucracy has got more complicated. Uh, And Italian bureaucracy um, is in many ways easier to navigate. They're just different. And uh, I think you just have to open your mind, accept it. However, working in Italy is much more complicated, setting up a company and so on, than it is in England. And 
uh, and other European countries, in fact. And I really think that that's something that the Italian government <laughs> should think about because it's very frustrating. And taxes are very high. We yes. always say we pay a sun tax. So yeah. They should give us a reduction this month. <laughs> in UK, it's becoming more and more bureaucratic, especially for uh, if you're not a British person. And it is and not a, resident. Not resident. It is a kind of nightmare. And also, I like Italy. What I found uh, that in in UK, if you get in a bureaucratic block, there is no way to resolve it. You just get stuck there. There's nothing else you can do. But here, you in the end, you find a solution. <laughs> and and going on with that, I think that if you go, uh, if you come to live in Italy or mm. go to live in any other country, that as an immigrant you have to realise that your logic that you were born with isn't necessarily the logic of the country you're in. Yes. And I think one must be respectful of the logic of another country uh, and not not criticise it. But Absolutely. we've chosen to be here, therefore, or, or I've chosen is his country. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that one has to uh, open one's arms to the... Mm. Um, idiosyncrasies uh, uh, as we think of them but not to them and so you know Anza will often say to me uh, but that's your logic and and I think that that's a very good point to to remember the other thing I think is Italians are much more fatalistic yes um, they don't ensure themselves <laughs> up to theirs and if something happens it happens and so I think that makes Probably for a better way of living. Um, uh, I think I still have problems with being fatal, but I try. <laughs> Driving. Uh, people always say, oh, how can you drive in Naples, in Florence, uh, in Italy in general? Uh, driving here is, is different. It's a different technique. Um, uh, I think the things that um, I don't like about Italian driving is that they tend to sit on your back, yes. which is very irritating. It's uh, very dangerous as well. <laughs> but on, on the other hand, people are much kinder in some way. They always let you in. Um, they're quite forgiving when you're going, you know, taking uh, uh, a wrong turning. I would say they let you in if you're a pedestrian. If you're actually driving, sometimes they always try to fit into a hole before you, which is quite dangerous here. Oh, I don't know. I find yeah, that people let England, me... I find that people think and, uh, you know, if you're on a narrow road, they allow you. So it's much, there's a different code. Uh, there's definitely less thanking. Yeah, um, there's less thanking, yes. Uh, mm. uh, but, uh, if, for example, in Naples, everything <laughs> is so slow, it's <laughs> you just kind of wiggle. Um, uh, here, it's, it's faster. But uh, on the whole... Um, uh, it's easier and they're much kinder to cyclists we yeah. we we are much more um used to having cyclists around so yeah. there's a much more uh equilibrium between cyclists and and drivers yes, um, i mean the drivers are tolerant with cyclists yeah. they, they are both in cities and also because uh, italians love cycling so they go in the country yeah and um on a saturday we always meet big Bands of cyclists, yeah. groups. So, um, yeah. Uh, and I, I think, uh, obviously, uh, now, you know, it's a bit of a myth that uh, drivers don't stop at zebra crossings. That was the way years ago. But now, actually, you can get fined if you don't stop at zebra crossings. You don't stop at lights. There are speed cameras everywhere. Absolutely, everything that's under the road. So um, it, driving has become much more controlled than it was, <laughs> shall we say? Yes, but it is a different way of driving. For instance, you drive in uh, in Naples, uh, and uh, a lot of British people say, "Oh, it's a nightmare to drive in Naples." But you've been driving Naples for thirty years. I mean, so how is it? <laughs> uh, well, I always remember on one occasion we had a very long, big jeep. And um, in the narrow streets at the back, I couldn't get round. Everybody moved their washing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anyway, as I say now, driving is much more controlled than it was. Uh, the other thing is manners. Manners are, are different. Um, 
when you meet somebody, uh, you very often you kiss um, yes. much more openly than you would in the UK, and you uh, give somebody a hug. Um, you kiss on both cheeks, not just one. We don't say uh, please as much. Uh, uh, we'll say thank you. Um, but in the UK, we, we use please much more often. And you always say uh, good morning uh, or good afternoon or good day, whatever time. In the shops. Yeah. In the shops. And you say goodbye. And um, you also grade your greeting of uh, formality according to the situation and also of course in your language you, yeah. you use either an informal language or a formal language and and that's not only between friendships but also between situations so you'd be much less formal in a village than you would be in a city for example yes. uh, so I think that's was something um, on, and on another one we'll, we'll uh, look at table and table manners, because I think that's quite an interesting one. They're different. <laughs> but maybe that's enough talking for today. <laughs> but well, when it you... comes down to it, you know, uh, <laughs> we're just a couple like any other couple. <laughs> yeah, but in reality, it, um, I think that after so many years they've been being together, <laughs> we merge. I, yes, but. I don't really find that we have a, a cultural difference. So we have, a, of course, different habits inherited from our family, but in reality, in everyday life, we don't, I don't find we've got a big cultural difference. Do you find that? Well, there are different, different I, I think also because we live between, uh, or, or we uh, spend we time between both places and both cultures, that uh, one just kind of steps into one from the other. Yes, because I mean, uh, if I'm in, in, in UK, I find perfectly at ease with my English friends, and uh, I don't feel that I, well, of course, I got a different accent, but I don't feel that uh, in reality I, I forget about that, I'm not even Italian. I, I also think that the world in general is becoming much more informal. Um, yes. Uh, and also in language and, um, you know, if you'd said ciao in a shop a few years ago, you would have a very dirty look. Uh, you wouldn't have that now. No. Um, and, and dress uh, as well has become much less formal. But, you know, you can even sometimes go into church with your shoulders showing, which 20 years ago would have been absolutely impossible. Um, I would say this is not uh, the Italian dress code. It has to do with uh, because the churches they you are in a different universe there, so it depends on the the perception that the churches have about the nudity and things. So um, probably you would have the same problem if you go in a church in France or in, in a Catholic church in France or in Germany. So probably. it is quite. Yeah. A, um, so it is quite. A, um, and, and and certainly. Um, as uh, young people travel more and study abroad and come here and study, cultures mix much yeah. more. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at uh, differences and what it means to be uh, married to somebody from another, yeah. <laughs> another country and culture, maybe. <laughs> now, the big question, are Italian men more romantic? They have a thing. Well, I can't really answer that question in general. <laughs> <laughs> but mine is. <laughs> what does it mean to be romantic? Oh, you do lots of little gestures and everything. Even making a cup of coffee is a gesture of love. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I also finished my cup of coffee. And normally you do express very quickly, but I always think my... Coffee slowly, probably I'm unusual for that, but I don't like to <coughs> put a sort of gush of coffee down my throat. <laughs> I'm going to say I have a slightly bigger cup because I had a macchiato. And I like a coffee, coffee here. Yeah. And I feel better after a cup of coffee. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, slight 
reflection after 30 years of marriage and 20 years of living in Italy, Italy uh, on these little cultural differences and also how it's changed over the years. And um, no doubt everything will continue to, to merge more and how wonderful it is that cultures mix up and um, people come together. Yes. So, uh, if you enjoy our videos, please don't forget to subscribe, press the like button, comment and see yes. if you uh, are married to somebody from another culture, whether uh, differences or challenges that you've found. Let us know, we're very, very interested. <laughs> And um, if you live in Italy, uh, what have been your... Uh, Experience. Yes, and what have you noticed? So, ciao a tutti, alla prossima. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, leave a like and activate the notification bell. You just need a Google account and it's free. It helps our community enormously. Thank you very much.